everybody welcome back it's Monday once again and I thought let's do things slightly different so normally in this slot I would be having a look at our weekly newsletter this week in the IFRJ so for those of you who haven't subscribed please do um, I will try and get a link out uh, during the chat whilst we go through I thought I'd do things slightly different so some of you may know, most of you probably not, that I do play a bit of chess. Uh, I've been playing chess since I was about 14, 15 years of age, so quite a while. And, um, you know, I've played in tournaments, I've played league chess, that kind of thing. So lots of stuff. And I'm, I'm very sort of like a very average club strength player. Um, but anyway, so what I used to do a lot of is I used to have a look at the chess base website so um chess base it's a it is the chess database program so that's where people put all of their games in and do prep work for uh, their opponents and look up openings and, and all that kind of thing so there's that but what they do as well is they have a new section so as well as obviously having that they've got like sort of chess based chess news and there they list a lot of stuff around you know what tournaments are taking place any new technologies that kind of thing and i was having a look um yeah I, for the first time in absolutely ages i was just having a flick through and i spotted this nugget what is your fisher number and i thought oh hang on a minute this sounds familiar is this the equivalent of a kevin bacon number but for chess so i had a quick look and what was interesting was they were talking about fish number and indeed what it was and there were two takes to this so there was one fish number which was you know how many hops away are you from uh, bobby fisher so for those of you who are going who the hell's bobby fisher so he was a super famous american chess player uh, and he was and what was really interesting about bobby fisher was prior to his dominance on the world stage uh, effectively um, sort of the Soviet Union was huge in chess so like, all, all the, the world sort of chess players were from there they had you know like, absolutely dominant in Olympiads they kept winning lots of titles and things like that and uh, Bobby Fischer who was an amazing chess prodigy effectively came to the stage and broke that dominance so it was it was huge at the time and certainly sort of around this sort of um, around sort of like the, the cold war and these kinds of things you know it was it was a huge uh it sort of changed to what was the status quo there so phenomenally famous chess player some questionable questionable um things he said in public but uh, you know as a chess player he was very very strong and it looks like there's a couple of articles here so this is the second article but we're going to look at both themes here and what they discuss in this article is how many hops away are you from Bobby Fischer? So what's your Bobby Fischer number? And they've got two ways at which they look at this. So uh, one would be through handshakes. Obviously, back in the good old days pre-COVID when we used to shake hands, one of the things that you do when you, you know, we, we used to do when you play a chess game is you always shake hands with your opponent prior to playing the game. And at the conclusion of the game, you shake hands as well. So that's the that was the tradition. I, I suspect no longer in the in these COVID aware times. Um, so that was this idea and so the first take of the Fisher number was so based on you know handshake so you've played somebody that person's then played somebody else and that person's then played somebody else and eventually the idea is maybe you know number of hops down they've played chess with Bobby Fisher you know I, they would have shaken hands at the start of the game so that was one and I thought well that's a very graphy that's 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 got graph stamped all over it so I thought that would be fun to do a bit of a domain change and in this article which is really interesting the new challenge which is talking about well okay it's one thing to have played against somebody who's played against somebody else who eventually has had a match against Bobby Fisher and this can be anybody it's not just Bobby Fisher we can be looking at other sort of famous chess players we could be looking at like Emmanuel Lesker we could be looking at Tal we could be looking at Gary Kasparov as those examples there's lots of different chess players we could be applying this to but the other idea here which becomes interesting is what about a fish in a where you've beaten someone who's then beaten somebody else who's then beaten somebody else and eventually uh, may have beaten Bobby Fischer so that's a that's a tougher one and again it's a fun one again this is a beautiful graph problem and 
the fun thing there is that one if you've played any kind of league chess or chess tournaments for the first one you should eventually have a fishing number that you know somewhere it may be a number of hops but you have it but with the second one where you're looking at who's beaten who's beaten who that potentially could be infinity there may not be a path where you've won where somebody else has won so forth all the way down to uh, Bobby Fischer or, or another famous chess player so these are fun and what I thought so let's go back to the uh, to the plan here is we, so we've talked a bit about you know the two types of uh, Bobby Fischer number and so what I thought would be fun is we look at this and again this is nice fun new domain and again if you've got any questions fire them in the chat and um, what we can do here is we can go down a couple of routes. So the, the first thing I thought would be good is based on the two different types of uh, Fisher number that we're looking at, can we now start thinking about what data model would we have? So how would we capture this data in a way so that not only you know we, we can answer the question based on handshakes, but we can also ask on wins. So there's going to be more than one way we can model this, but Let's have a quick look at some approaches we can use. And then what we'll try and do afterwards is can we find some data? So we're not gonna be able to have an in-depth uh, way to, uh, to, uh, to answer you know, these, sort of, these chess numbers. But what we could do is we can just import some data and have a look at some ideas behind the queries we'd write. And then a bit of fun will be for me uh, in the background in the future is to have a look at, can I find some definitive data? So we're going to be looking at chess tournament results. We're going to be looking at league matches. So I'll show you as well some of the data that exists out there. And then we can certainly plant that seed about the kind of data that's available and you know how we might import it to be able to find out that information. For those of you who are interested, you can see the, oops, the Google slides pop up. You can see at the bottom when, when the uh, pop up fades away what the article is, and I will post the article um, link in the chat so you've got a copy of that as well. So I thought that would be fun. So, again, if you've got any questions, so certainly as we're going through, ask away and we'll address those as we go forward. So, right, so first of all, let's have a think about the data model. So I'm going to bring up arrows for that. So what we've got, so for those of you, let me just clear this. So we've got a number of ways about how we can go about modeling our, you know, mod doing our data modeling in the F4J. And, you know, you can do this on a whiteboard, you can do this using PowerPoint. Another tool that you might find useful is Near4j Arrows. So this is something my colleague Alistair Jones put together. So it's a very lightweight, a lightweight tool that you can use to doodle about. And I've put a link in the chat if that's of interest to you. And I'm going to use this to start talking through some decision points with regards to how we might go about uh, modeling our data so that we know when we're importing the data, how we want to import it to be able to answer our Fisher number question. So I'm not going to go into huge amounts of detail with regards to uh, modeling. We'll do a little bit. But if we think about what we have here, so we're going to have, uh, obviously, as for those of you who are a bit new to modeling, we're going to have nodes and relationships. Uh, nodes are our unit of information, so these tend to be our nouns. So this is going to be a person, a player, a game, that kind of thing in this context. And then what we do is we want to talk about the relationship these nodes have with other nodes. And this tends to be like a verb. So it might be um, played against someone, played a game, maybe we want to capture some properties on their relationship, such as what was the outcome. So we're going to work through this model. So I haven't come up with one in my head at the moment. So we'll just work through it slowly and iterate. And again, and if you've got any questions, fire them in the chat. So we're probably going to have a, a player. So let's just call it person for now. So we've got, so we're going to have a node and a node's going to have a label of person. And maybe they're going to, you know, we're going to have some, um, have some information here. Now, because we've, 
primarily focused on the Fisher number. What I'm probably going to do is I'm just gonna have a name property. So let's put Lou, let's put me in there. I'm not gonna bother with any other information. Obviously, if you want to come back and do some further stuff on this, maybe we'll add it, but for now I'm gonna keep it really lightweight. So I'm gonna start off with doing the physical sort of example of the data, how it might look, and then we can refine this and say what the actual data model is going to look like. So you've got, we've got person, so here we've got Lou, and we're thinking about the interaction. So we've got a number of ways of how we might capture information uh, based on this and the pros and cons of the various modeling approaches. So one approach we might say is maybe we're gonna have something like this. So let's have another person node and just trying to think who I can put down. I'm just going to invent some, some, some mythical persons. Let's call them um, Dave. So let's say I've, you know, there's, there's another uh, chess player called Dave. And what I could say is maybe I'm going to do something like a uh, played relationship. And maybe I'm going to have uh, a result property. And let's say uh, we're going to do the uh, but based on the direction. So if we're saying an outgoing relationship from, from the Luno, so let's say I, 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 I lost, I, I lost today. If it was, it was a sad day, but you know, you got to pick yourself up and carry on. So may, maybe I'm going to capture the information like this. So I can say, well, I had a game against Dave and you know, maybe I'm gonna, maybe I'm even gonna capture the dates of the game. So let's say this was in 2018, 09, 03, for example. I might do this. So this is one way I might use to capture that data. Uh, the pros of capturing this, uh, if I wanted to filter based on date, I can. I can filter based on the result, the property. But the only, and then there'll, there'll be a few sort of cons with this. So some of the challenges that we have with this is I have to do a property filter. So on, on the relationship, so if I wanted to find all the games where I wanted to do, where I, I'd only beaten players, then I'd have to filter all of those relationship properties, and that's quite slow. And the other thing as well is, well, what happens if I've played Dave 50 times? I might end up putting in 50 relationships. And the thing is, we're only ever interested in the one time that I've played. And then if we're looking at that's sort of like the handshake one. And if I'm looking at the number of times, well, actually I beat Dave, then I'm only, ever interest, I'm only interested in the one time I beat Dave, not the, let's say I played Dave 50 times and I lost 49 times, but I beat him once. I only care about the one time that I want. So I always want the highest one for the purposes of this exercise for working out the numbers. So this might not be an ideal way of doing it. So let's have a look at another approach we may want to, to use for modeling. So let's, I'm going to pick another person. I'm going to do a different example and then I'll clean this up. So, so bear with me. So let's do another person. Let's going to, let's say I'm playing someone called uh, Angelica as an example. So another approach I might decide to use, I might say, well, actually, um, I'm going to use an outbound relationship. I'm going to ignore, actually, I'm going to ignore the direction of the relationship to tell me what the result was. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it on the relationship type. And in the relationship type, oh, no, that's not gonna work. We still need to count the direction because that we want to say the direction for a result. So if it's an outbound, uh, if it's an outbound relationship, we're going to say that that is uh, a win or a draw. And then we can quantify on the relationship type what happened. So let's say uh, I can do something like played true played draw and then we can decide in our rules whether we want to count draws as a positive result as well as wins but that's a story for another day so maybe i'm going to do something like this play draw and let's do a third one like uh ian and then maybe i've got played one so maybe I'd do something like this, and let's say there was another person, let's say we had a, a Sue. Uh, 
and uh, let's say Sue beat me, then maybe what we might maybe ooh let's double that. Uh, maybe we'll do something like this. So this is how we could represent that that Sue uh, beat me. And then like this, what we're saying is we're using, so here, so in the first example against Dave, um, we're using the outbound to say what happened. So we're saying what, what happened. So we're saying that because it's outbound from me, then we're saying that the property of the result means that I lost against uh, Dave. And again, if we flip this relationship around, we could do result one and then we know. So we're saying the outbound relationship is saying what's happened to that person. So that's, that's one approach we can use. We've got the other approach here where we can use the relationship type specifically. So what you'll notice here is we're never going to have a played loss relationship because what we know is that if there's an outbound relationship of played one from Sue to me, then we know that for me to say what games I'd lost or against people, then I would just say uh, the, the relationship coming, you know, sort of uh, an inbound relationship to me with played one on there. So hopefully this makes sense. Shout if it doesn't. So th that's another way of doing it. So the pros of this approach uh, will be um, we can do a filter immediately on the relationship type and direction. So we don't need to do a search in the properties. And again, what we can do as well is uh, for this one, we can say, well, we'll get rid of date because actually we don't care about date. And what we can say is for these ones, we only ever capture it. Actually, no, we still need to capture it. So we only ever capture it when they result each way. So let's say I play more than one game against Dave where there's different results, then we can capture those and we just keep them. So we don't keep adding the 50 games, we only count them when we've got different outcomes. If that makes sense so far. So that's another approach we can do. So one we can do is we can capture it on the property and just have like a played. We can capture it specifically relationship type and we only just capture it once because we don't care about the number of times because that's not what a questioner is asking. Another approach we might use is something like this, where actually we capture information about the game because we, we care about that. So let's do, I should call it a match. That sounds more, sounds more official if we call it a match rather than a game. And then maybe we've got some information like a date, whatever. We can, we can ignore the date, but maybe we want to capture this, I don't know. As a match, and then we might have something like, uh, let's say I've got, a I've, I've got, I've had a match against Sue. Whoops, let's get rid of that. Oh no, cool. And then maybe we've, we're going to have something like this. So we might say, um, so you might go down this route and. Uh, because you want to do some further questions on the match. So maybe you want to have a look at details, but again, I would probably avoid this because the question we're looking to answer is about Fisher numbers. So we don't necessarily need to know information about the match because we never ask, you know, what was the date or how many matches there were, anything like that. So we never ask about this. So this, whilst it would be useful if we were looking at any stats for the match or number of matches or we wanted to compare some information about the match so it makes sense to pull that out but for the purposes of what we're looking to answer this doesn't uh, this kind of adds complication to our queries without giving us any extra to help answer the question better so i'd probably skip this and i would so I'd get rid of this because i don't like this approach we're not going to use this one and i'd probably get rid of this one because i have to filter on properties so actually what i want to do is something like this so this is the model I want to use where I'm going to say, well, the outbound direction basically says what who the relationship type refers to. So let's go with that. So that's a tick for the data model. So what we'll do is we we'll probably have something where we've got a self-referencing article. So let's do that as a quick example. So I'm going to export the cipher for this. So you can see what's going on. We can have a quick look at this in the FJ. So I'm just going to say uh, load that data. So this is a fresh database. <coughs> and if I return all the data, okay, these the, uh, one and zero, those are my anchor nodes. So I'll get rid of those in a second. So don't worry about that. 
But here we've got our data. And if I do a, if I sort of show the data model for this, so. Now again, ignore that, that's just a thing. But you can see we've got this idea of a person and we've got these self-referencing uh, relationships. So we, the person either played and drew against the person or a person played and won against the person. And then we just infer the loss on the other side of that relationship. So if I wanted to ask the question here, um, who did I, who, who did I um, beat? Then I would do this. So I'd say played one, and it's an outbound relationship from me. So this means all the games that I've won. P two return p two dot name oh, naughty brackets run away. So this is going to show the people that I've beaten. There you go, so I've beaten Ian. If I want to find all the people that I've lost against, I will just change the direction. So bear in mind, we're saying if it's an outbound relationship from node, that means that that's what happened to that person. So that played one. So who beat me? Sue. And if I want to know about all the people that I've either um, played one or drew against, and this is where it gets interesting, Thing because also we will have inbound directions for the draw. So we're going to have this and we're going to have a second part to this query, which will be uh, uh, do, 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 something like actually, we can do it like this. So, what we could do is leave this empty. And then we can put a where clause. So where um, p at one. I don't know why I'm getting all these bonus square brackets. But I played one, and we have the outbound relationship. Or, and then this one we don't care about the direction here. So we want to say play true. And let's see, so hopefully this should work. Okay, so did, did I draw against Sue as well? No. Lost against Sue. Let me just quickly check. Maybe you can't do it that way. Okay, we can. Played one. Oh no, hang on. P2. We'll play Drew P2. There you go. We need to probably tell it that detail. There you go. So you remember we had a draw against Angelica. So played, we had a draw against Angelica and we had a game where we won against Ian. So what we can do, and to give you an example of the draw coming in opposite direction, so let's say I drew with Sue but we're going to have the relationship going from Sue. So let's do create, oops, let's match them first. So match person name Sue. And let's do Lou. And what we're saying is that I had a draw with Sue, but we're going to do the outbound relationship from Sue. So we'll do create s played draw with Lou. So let's create that first to begin with. Perfect. And now what we can do is let's say what the result was as well, because I'm really interested in, in to know what happened. So the same idea when to bring back all the games where there was either we well, either I won or I drew someone. So what we can do is the name as Component. Ah, so let's 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 do this. So let's say return p that name. So return uh, my name as me. Let's do our uh, type. We're going to get type of the relationship. 
as result and p2.name as opponent. So like this, we've now added two, so we can see that I Oh dear, what did we do wrong here? We shouldn't be bringing back the... Because we didn't win against Sue. Yeah, so what I'm trying to do, so something just read, I didn't specify direction. So what, so the direction matters if it's a win, but the direction doesn't matter if it's a draw. So what you can see here is I'm specifying the direction for win because I want to know the games where I won. And then what I want to do here is I want to specify where it was a draw. So I want to know only the relationships when it was a draw. So, uh, so I've specified the criteria here around the draw. Yeah, yeah, so. That's why I'm a little bit curious as to why it's not showing the um, sh showing sh why it's showing the win. So if I do, let's just quickly comment this out. This is a bit of excitement. Okay, so it shows when I, I won. So that is intriguing as to why it is. So if I do the draws, or I just drew the matches. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? It should be bringing back the... All right, I'll, I, will, I will investigate that later, but we'll stick to the wins for now and then we'll see why it's doing the draws. I don't, I don't really want to do the double direction arrows for that because that just gives us a messy data model and we don't need to do that because we have enough information. But you kind of get an idea of what's you kind of get an idea of what's going on here. So you can kind of see the building blocks of how we're going to go with this. So that's our data model. So let's try and bring in um, bring in some data. So just trying to think what's a, what, what can we do for this for a bit of fun. So I'm going to go through some of the data and trying to get some of the data is a bit fun. Uh, as in, uh, it's it's all over the place and not standardised, and there's various games. But let's do. Um, there's a really great website called Chess Results, uh, which has been around. I don't know because I, I stopped playing chess for a number of years, and then I started playing chess again quite recently. So some stuff has changed. But what we can do is we can pick a random pick a random tournament. So I'm going to do a tournament search. Tournament database. So what we can do, and there's a lot of online chess now. So let's pick a random, random, oh, Tradewise Gibraltar. That, that's a really big tournament that takes place every year. So I'm just going to show the tournament details. And what we can do is if we get the final cross table after 10 rounds, so I'll talk you a little bit through what's going on here. So all chess tournaments tend to follow this format and I'm being chased by sofas. Um, uh, so what you do, a cross table, so it's very similar to any other cross tables that you've looked at. Can I get rid of this so it's not in the way? Let me see. No, I can't. Oh, we go. well. Sorry about that, but anyway, so there was 10 rounds in this tournament and what you can see is you have each of the rounds and then what will happen is that each player here's got a, a number, so this is the ranks, this is what position they finished in. So what we, we can do is, for example, here Nigel Short, so he's a British Grandmaster. Uh, we can have a look and we can basically see this is the number. So this basically says who do they play, so this will be the first round, so they played 107, which is uh, Tizia Gara. Uh, what colour, what pieces, did, colour pieces did they have? So here it's uh, Nigel had black. And then we've got the result. So the result here is that it was a draw. So uh, one indicates that that person won. 
uh, half means that there was a draw and the zero means that they lost. So there is a lot of these cross tables all over the place and whilst I'm not suggesting we are going to go through every single result, what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this to Excel, uh, to um, Excel and I'm going to have a quick peek at what this data looks like and hopefully if it's in this handy format what we'll do is we will load that data and we can at least have a go at doing some uh, Fisher numbers or my, maybe Michael Adam numbers or so all of these so GM is Grandmaster uh, you'll see an uh, FM is Fide Master IM is International Master so the various titles you can get for being a chess player and what we'll do is Yep, so I've just downloaded Excel, so it's actually in a reasonably pleasant format. So I am just going to quickly turn this into an Excel, sorry, a, 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 um, into a CSV ready format. We're going to import this and then we can at least have a play with this small data set to try and look at some uh, Fisher numbers. So, oh, not Fisher, like HS player numbers. So for example here, each person has only played 10 rounds. But you can see here we've got 150 people and I suspect there's probably a lot more than 150 people. I'm just going to have a look at the Excel file now. Oh no, it's 150 people. Okay. So that you'll have bigger tournaments as well where you've got people running into the thousands. And so what we can do is we've got 10 people but we can still do things like, you know, what's the link between uh, like the winner here. So Levon Aronian won. And we can still see, you know, how many links is he between uh, Paul John Wallace, who I don't think he ever plays, so he's, there's there's no one here, so he's never played him, so we can at least try and figure out who of his opponents have played of play. So we can still do it within the tournament, so I think that's still good fun. So let me just get that data ready, and then we're going to have a bit of fun. This is exciting. So I will just... Just, I'm just getting rid of some little headers and things that have appeared. So watch this space and then we are almost ready. I'm going to get rid of their titles because we're not worried about that. And I'm going to save this as a CSV. I've not done this before, so this is quite exciting. And I'm so one thing I'm really, really keen to do is I want to try and scrape all of the data because there's loads of these classical tournaments and you know this was in a sort of this this got this this era where they used to smoke at the board which is amazing to think that people used to they used to sit at the chessboard and they'd be sitting there like sort of smoking cigars and drinking champagne and it was it, it, it's quite a change to the kind of chess that I play these days so there's there's certainly no um there's there's, there's no cigars involved but uh, I did play one tournament where they did have a bar and I, I may have had a glass of wine in the uh, one of my afternoon matches. Not sure I did much for my chest, but I enjoyed the experience. So, right, okay, I am just going to quickly uh, put this into my import folder. So one moment, and then we're going to have some fun. So I'm going to show you what the data looks like. Uh -uh, and then open my import folder. Sorry, I'm sure you can't see this, I'm just fiddling about with a uh, desktop. So you're just seeing my uh, browser window, but we'll be back shortly. Just, we need some of that lift music to sort of play in the background whilst I uh, juggle with things. Or you can hum, that'll work as well. Okay, right, we are in business. So let's just take a quick peek at what this file looks like that I've downloaded. So let's do uh, OCSV with headers as well. Have I got this right around? With headers, put in the files, and the file, file, slash, slash, slash. I always forget this. So I have this thing where I sort of, uh, sort of try to remember what the uh, the uh, setup is, but that's all good. As row, return row limits four. There we go. There we go. Right. So, 
Oh, we've got lots of funny characters. This this should be entertaining. Oh, you want to see the Excel? All right, give me a second. Let me let me pull the Excel file up into um, uh, into Google Drive. So give me two seconds, and then we will do a great Excel reveal. Uh, do, 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 do. Just going to re-download it so you can see what I've done. Right, okay, so this is what the Excel file looks like. So you can see here, We've got some, like, so it gives you the link where the things come from. We've got the title of the tournament. And I think in the future, actually, because I'm a bit of a chess buff and I really want to do more, um, not well, chess, I, I, I play chess, I read some articles. I find it really interesting. Um, but I'm very keen to see, there's so many graphy things you can do with uh, with chess. So I am very much intending to explore some different data model things. So this information could well be useful. But for now, what I've done is I've deleted all of this stuff. I've deleted this uh, title column because we're not really worried about that. And then what you'll what we will have, so I'll show you when I load it, is we'll have the rank number, we'll have the player's name, we've got their rating, which we're not going to use, we've got the federation, so which chess federation they belong to, and then we've got the results. So this is the stuff we want. We want the names, we want the, the rank, and we want their results, and this will be fun so we can start seeing how people have played against each other. Okay, right, so what I've done here, I've done the you know low CSV with headers, so that's what the file. So I've basically removed those um, lines that I described, and I just saved it as CSV, and I'm just loading each row and I'm returning the rows. So we've got a bit of fun going on here. So we've got the cute little um, this symbol, which basically is that half. So those were the draws, and obviously you've got the ones, and I'm I'm guessing um, Levon didn't actually lose any games, so he's not going to have any zeros. So let's find somebody who didn't quite do so well. So let's have a quick peek. Who did we? Oh, um, Nikita lost in round two. So let's have a quick peek what that looks like. So, oh, I've got to do five rows. Ah, okay, All right, there you go. Yep, so it comes as zero. So zero is fine, one's fine. And then we've got the funny character. So what I'm gonna quickly do is I just want to see whether that's going to filter okay. So we see that in uh, round 10, there was a draw. So I'm just gonna quickly filter it down specifically to the draw. So limit one, and what I want to do is return row dot, I'm gonna put back um, back ticks because I don't know how this is going to turn out. So row ten dot rud uh, equals. I am just going to do this horrible thing where I'm just going to copy and paste this and see what happens. So does it come back as true? It comes back as false. So I'm just going to quickly copy the half. See what happens. Otherwise, we're going to have to. We might need to be a bit clever about how we how we're going to manage this. False. Okay, this is going to be slightly problematic. Then that's fine. We like a challenge. Challenges are good. So there's a couple of things we can do. We can probably do like a thing where is it one? Is it zero? If it's neither one nor zero, then we know it's a draw. The other option is I go into Excel and just fix this and re-import it, which might not be a terrible idea to be honest with you. So I'm going to quickly do that. So uh, give me two seconds. I'm just going to quickly change the. Uh, I'm going to change the draw to number two. So zeros are lost, ones a win, and twos a draw. So that's just the quickest, uh, quickest way around to solve this, so that we don't, so we can quickly get some progress because we want to do the import. The import's the fun bit. So I'm changing all the draws to two. And replace with two. Uh, 
There were 562 draws for those of you who are interested. Gripping stuff, there's 560 draws in that tournament. Okay, so if I now show you what I've done. There you go, so you see the two, so that was before that was oh, that funny squiggle, now it's a two. So we've got a nice way of uh, capturing the draws now. So if I come back to the previous query that I ran, and we said is equal to two, that should come back as true now. Oh, or it doesn't, okay. Okay. Um, oh, you know what I've done? I made the terrible, terrible error where I should have said contains. Uh, that's fine. So let's do. Maybe we could have done the squiggle. There we go. Fine. Doesn't matter. We got plan. We know how we're going to pull those drawers out. So it's all good. It's all fun. Okay, right. Let's now think about how we're going to load this data. So if I get rid of these windows. So this is what our this is what our um, data looks like. So we've got our headers. So we've got TB1. That's, uh, you know, those. Oh, so TB13, uh, that's going to be the uh, what uh, ranking they were, I believe. What was, th oh, what was three? It's a mystery. Okay, not a problem. We'll dig that out later. So we've got here rank. So rank one, that's what we care about. So that's what we want to know. So we know that uh, level one is one. We should have a name here somewhere. There we go. That's name. And then we've got these funny numbers like seven dot round. So that's just basically saying it's round seven. And then here we've got, this is the goal bit here. So we've got the uh, the opponent number. We've got what color they played and what was the result. So what I suggest we do here is we're gonna do a number of passes to load the data. So the first pass we're going to do is we're going to get the uh, person. So we're gonna get their name and we're gonna give them uh, like a, a property of you know, what their rank is. So that's the first pass we're going to do. So we're going to load up all the, the players. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go through each of the, we're going to go through each of the uh, rounds that they've played. And then we are going to extract out who they played and what the result was. So we're then going to find that player and then create the relationships around it. So um, we'll have a bit of fun with this, like, try and get that going. And then afterwards we can do some fun querying. Okay, right, so let's start off with loading the players. I just start off with creating some indexes. So I'm gonna first get rid of all the data we've already got in there. So uh, match and detach, delete. And so that's gonna delete all of the dummy data I did in uh, arrows. And then I'm gonna just, we don't really need it's a small data set, but why not? Uh, rank. And let's do, I well, didn't even need to create the index, so it's, we'll not worry about that for now. That's fine, it's all good. It's a small data set. Uh, let's do um, load our data. And then what we're gonna say here is create layer. And we're gonna have property of rank, and the rank's going to be row dot, RK, so let's do it in backticks just in case, because we've got funny characters in there. RK dot, that's the rank. I want the name as well. I'm gonna do name, and name's going to be row dot name. And so far, so good. All right, so if we do this, this should go off and create us some players. Do we want to add rating? You know what, let's add rating as well. Let's live life on the edge. So let's also add a rating and I'm going to turn the rank to integer. So let's do it. Cause that should be an integer. And let's add a rating as well. You know, we might not have a play with that later. Let's do a rating is going to be to integer. And then we want 
what do we do as rating? Is it we just call it rating or RTG? Row dot RTG. Excellent. So this should go off and create some data for us. So we're going to get all. There we go. So we've got 153 players. It's interesting. So I thought we only had 100 and. 50, so there must have been some stuff at the bottom of the file. That's okay, that's not a deal breaker. It's we're probably just gonna get some funny funny data, but that's fine. So let's do match the person or player even. And let's return names, return p dot name, order by p dot name. Okay, so we've got our players in, so this is all good stuff. So there we go. Very good got all of our players, we've got a bunch of null nodes. So what we can do is let's just get rid of those so we don't need to worry about that. And I'm going to clear up the file clearly so they don't come back again. Okay. So let's do match where p dot uh, where not exists. I'm guessing that's the thing that he complained about. Yeah, perfect, so we can just get rid of those. Nice and easy, so we've cleaned that list up. Okay, so we've got the, we've done the first bit, so we've got the names in. So the next fun bit's going to be getting in the, uh, the results. Uh, this should be fun. So what we're gonna do is let's bring back, so we wanna try and iterate, because we've got 10 rounds. So let's bring back our sample again. So what we want to iterate through is all of these where we've got the uh, six dot round, seven dot round, that kind of thing. So let's have a little think about how we're gonna pull those out because we could just do write the 10, 10 queries out, but I wanna be efficient, I wanna try and do that in a in a fancy loop of some description. I think that's that's way more um, rewarding to to sort that one out. So I'm just going to open the window slightly. It's a little bit warm in here. We've got a resurgence of summer in the UK. It's going to be 28 degrees today. Okay, so what the thing that we're interested in is the uh, these things here. Whoa, where are we? All over the place. Ten round, seven round, that thing. So let's see how we can try and pull those out. So what we could do, can we do, I don't think we can splice the row names, so it might not work when I'm thinking. So we may have to do each one individually. That's fine. So let's, let's have a go at that. So let's do, I love that I've opened the window and there's like a siren now. So this is brilliant. It's all good. I live near a hospital, that's probably why. Okay, so let's do we're gonna we're gonna need to match the players, so we could collect the rows. Yeah, let's let's try collecting. So well, let's let's try this. So let's do uh with Yeah, let's let's try this. Let's see if this is gonna work. So row dot back tick one dot rud back tick. And it's gonna copy this bunch. So I'm just gonna do a few to see if this process works. And if it does, then we shall expand it out. So let's do as two as rounds. Unwind rounds as round, return round limit return something. Okay, yeah, that's gonna work. That's cool. Woo. Right, that's I think we, that's how we're gonna tackle this one because we're not so worried about the rounds. I don't think we. I, well, we think we can leave rounds for now. But what we do care about is who played who and what the outcome was. Okay, so that's good. So we know that works. And then let's. Do, well, we're probably going to need to trim those as well. So we need to remember to trim that. So we'll, we'll do that in a bit. 
So let's just uh, put these in. I'm just gonna do the the copy the great copy and paste job. So we've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now we just do the names. There will be a better way of doing this. I will think about all the best way of doing this, but for now, this is quick and dirty and does the job. Okay, so we've got our 10 rounds. And we're also going to need who was playing. So let's do, it was row.rank, R-N-K with a dot, wasn't it? Oh, let's see. Yes, I know it was just R-K. R-K dot, okay. As player rank. So we've got that information. And then what we can do is um, match. Oh, we could have probably done it up here. Match P. Layer rank to integer we inter we use integer that we for that dot row dot okay dot okay and then we can say we're gonna keep p because that's our player and we've got our rounds. Okay, brilliant, so that's the next bit. So the next fun stage is going to be uh, processing the, the round names. So let's do uh, unwind rounds as round. So this is, so what I did, the cheaty thing here is because we know we've got all of those like 10 columns for the rounds in the spreadsheet. So I'm going to grab all of them into uh, into like a, an array. So that's what I'm doing when I'm putting the brackets. And then I can unwind them and it pulls them as in each element. So it's an element. So it's a nice cheaty trick we can use to quickly get that data. Okay, right. Unwind rounds as rounds. This is where it's going to get become interesting because I've now got to do some horrible processing, but that's fine. So if you remember the format, so uh, format so our format's gonna be, so it's gonna be uh, rank. So that's who they played. Color, that was, a, what color they did? Was it, was it W for white or B for black? And then we've got the outcome. And that's going to be either um, a zero for a loss, one for a win, and two for a draw. So we're gonna be having fun, because we're gonna to have to do some kind of a, a, a some kind of conditional statement so we can say what direction the arrow goes in. Well, that's all good. So the other thing we've got to bear in mind as well, I've just realized, is we're gonna have two sets of directions. Hmm, that's fine, that's okay. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And the reason why we're gonna have two sets is because you've got to bear in mind, we've got that cross table goes both ways. So we've got where, oh, I've just realized what we can do as a cheat for this. And uh, what we can say is, because you, you'll have two, because you, you, bear, you bear in mind that if, let's, let's go back to the results you can see as an example. So you can see here, so Levin or Enin has played 158 and there was a draw. So if we go down to 158, okay, that's, okay, so there's, there's, there's obviously more players than the 150 that's suggested here. So that's, We'll have a look at that in a bit, how we're going to solve that one. Um, but don't worry about it too much. So it's obviously they've not provided the whole the whole data. But um, let's pick one that's not that we know. So 85, so so 11 or any, uh, let's pick another draw. So here, so 11 or any drew against number 84. So let's go down to 84. There you go. And you can see there's another draw here. So you can see what's gonna happen. If we just go through this list as is, What's going to happen is we're going to 
uh, we're going to have almost two relationships coming in. So we've got one so uh, Levin so drew with um, Sergi, and then you're gonna have one that Sergi drew with uh, Levin. And we, we don't we don't want that. We just want the one relationship. So cheeky thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to do, put a rule based on the opponent number. So what we're gonna say is we only want to include it where the opponent number is lower than the current rank. So that we want to do we only want to do put the result in where the rank is lower than the person we're doing. So like that will stop us from doing double double uh, directions. So that'll work, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, so we'll do that. Okay, so we've got this, and now let's start doing a bit of fiddling with the data. So, we need to match the player. So let's do uh, with round, we want that, P, but the player. And then what we're going to do is Actually, we should probably do the splitting out here. So let's do let's do the splitting out here. So say with P. So that's the player. And let's do okay. We probably want to clean up rounds. Let's do double step. Um, I think we've got trim, haven't we? I think we've got a trim in Cypher. So trim round as round. Let's just make sure that still works. Return round limits. I think we can do the same name to name. Yep, perfect. Just want to double check that. Okay, so. And let's clean this up. So with P, let's do, uh, do, 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 do. Oh, I think we've got right. So right round one as result. So remember, one, a zero for a loss, one for a win, two for a draw. Then we want uh, left round. Uh, size round minus two. That's going to give us the uh, rank. And then the bit we, 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 oh, that's it. We don't care about the color. So we can forget about the color. Who cares about the color? We can just abandon that. That's good. So if we do that, and if we now try to return, uh, let's try returning uh, result rank limit one. Hopefully that should give us 152 and 158 and two. Perfect. Okay, so there we go. We've got the information that we need. Now let's have a go at putting this all into practice. Oh, that should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. So match opponent, player. And that's going to be at rank colon to integer rank. Okay, so we're matching our player. That's good. And then we need to do something with results. So, uh, do, 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 do. where. Actually, what we probably want to do, we want to put where stem. So we don't want to count opponents who have got a lower, who've got a higher rank than us. So where, oh, this is going to get fun. So where p dot rank is greater than, no, yeah, p dot rank is greater than op dot rank. Okay, so that's the conditions. Hopefully, that's just going to filter out the ones that we care about. So let's, we can do a quick test of this. So let's have a quick look at our results. Did we have, do we have a result where um, these two, oh my goodness, these ads are annoying. And I'm gonna have a quick peek in. Oh, one second. So do, 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 does the first and second seed ever, well, first and second rank ever play each other? And the answer is they do not. Oh, that's exciting. Okay, so I'm going to do uh, number 
three ranks Hiroki Nakamura and Nikita Vityugov uh, played each other so oh no Richard Rapport okay let's do that let's let's so let's try this let's limit this to the first um 30 results let's do um return p dot name and let's return op dot rank limit so uh, let's do 30 so what we should not see we shouldn't see a So we shouldn't see a situation where uh, p dot rank is lower than op dot rank. So let's see what happens here. Oh, oh no, I missed one. I missed one. It would have been easy if I just added two p's. But that's all good. Right. So we should never have a situation where that fell flat on his face. Okay, I've probably got the wrong way around, but that's okay. So it's going the right way around, so oh, this way. There we go. Perfect. So what we want is we never want the uh we ne we never want this number to be higher than this number. So that's gonna that's gonna solve our double counting problem. So that's good. That's all in business. Right, let's let's have another go. So what we could have done actually, now I'm thinking about it, is maybe it makes sense. Oh no, that's fine. Let's, let's have fun with the outbound relationships, that's all good. Okay, so we've got that the right way around. So now what we want to do is put in the results. So we've got two situations, we've got uh, uh, three. We've got draw, so draw, fine. So draw and win, we want an outbound relationship from our player. And if it's a loss, we want to change the direction. So what we can do is, we can do two passes, where we can say we do for draw or win, or we can try and put conditional statements in. So let's do, uh, let me just remind myself. Uh, we can do, um, we can do a trick with uh, case when then. Uh, do, 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 do. Quick reminder of how we're going to do this. <laughs> so there's a little trick we can do. So I'm going to have to remind myself how to do this as I keep forgetting how to do it. Um, is you can mix up case when then with uh, say to execute. So let me two moments. Let's do. As I remind myself how to do this. It'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. Again, if you've got any questions, chuck them in. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, one second. Oh yes. Okay. So what we want to do? We want to do this thing where we do this. Um, uh, this the for each trick. So we do for each i in case when now put in. So case when. Uh, it's, we, we've got result, haven't we? Case when result is not equal, or actually, when case when result is equal to uh, a loss, 
So we're going to, going to do stuff when it's a loss. And remember, this is still a string, so that's why I'm wrapping quotes around it. So case when that is that. Then we're going to do something. Then whatever. Uh, then one else whatever and and then I'm going to put in what I actually want to do and this is where I'm going to put in the relationship so here we're going to say um, op create op and we said uh, beat uh, yeah whatever um, one against uh, player. Okay, so that's what we want to do when that happens, when that condition is met. Then we've got the next uh, case where we want to do so we want to do, I'm just I've got this the right way around. Nah. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna. I, I I need to sort of take a step back and think how to do it. So let's just worry about the draws for now. So let's let's deal with the losses, and then we'll do the second pass for the wins and draws, and then we're sorted. I'm obviously quite keen to get some queries out. So let's do 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 do, do and result is equal to a loss. So then we're gonna do create. Uh, it's going to be opponent up oh. one against one rather than whoa one against uh, player. So that's what we're saying. So because because the player lost, that's why we've got the unbound outbound relationship here. So we're going to do that. And hopefully that should run without any errors. Oh no, I've done something wrong. Oh, that's a helpful error. What did we leave out? That was a super helpful error. Uh... Oh man. All right, let's 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 decompose the query and let's see what's gone wrong. Okay, so we return the opponent, we return a, a player, we return a rank and return a result. That all looks good to me. Let's have a look. Let's do with op p. Go on then. Let's see if let's see if that helps. No. Oh wow, that's exciting. I don't know why it's I'm not sure why we've got a problem there. That's exciting. That's left me stumped, I have to say. All right, you know what, let's put a limit on this. Just checking if there's anything obvious here that I've missed. Ooh. 
So I wonder if there's something funny in Hmm. Okay, let's go back to this. Let's see. I'm not going to limit it. I'm just going to return everything and just see there's there's something is there something funny in the data? Yeah, so there must be something funny in the data that upsets it. Ah. Oh, I've just spotted something nasty. So we've got a situation where we have minus numbers. I think some people have defaulted matches. Okay, so let's do this. So let's do... Uh, so we've got a situation where some of the, the um, uh, results are defaults. So I'm just trying to think how we're going to deal with that. So um, I'll give you an example of a default. Oh, we've closed it. But basically, um, if somebody doesn't turn up, uh, you won't. You're not going to give them a score, or you know they've maybe taken a half point by or something. So we don't have a round value for them. So uh, size round is greater than two. Does that stop the problem? It does not. Oh no, hang on. I probably want to do this. Does this make the problem go away? It does, perfect. Okay, that's an easy fix. So what's happening there is that we have some of our round information didn't have uh, uh, didn't have the uh, didn't have any values it was like a minus two and obviously that's upset all of this process here where we're trying to pull bits of information out so that's it that's an easy fix we're going to just say that round has to be over two characters long and then that should fix that problem right okay finally going to load some data this is exciting uh, look at that nice and fast only 38 relationships that seems small Oh yes, because of high number. No, this is this is expected behaviour. So let's do and let's say res and result in let's do that and then we're just gonna switch the direction. Oh no, we've got to do it for we've got these three times because we've got draws as well, haven't we? That's okay. So we just do it three times. We know it's working. So and result equals one. And then we'll just run it one more time for the draws. Okay, we've got all the data in, finally. It's all good, thank you for bearing with me there. So it's good, we've, got some, we've, we've loaded in that data. So if I now do match n return star, we're gonna see this big graph of all the various people have played everybody else. Hey. Oh, look at that. And the one thing I've just spotted is I've forgotten to... Oh yeah, so what's happened here is, remember we've got some nodes where um, they're like 158 and we only got up to 150 players. So that's why we've got these mystical uh, these mystical uh, dwarf nodes. But that's okay, that's fine. So maybe I'll just, do, I might decide to redo this so that we can have a look at those. But let's not worry about that. So we'll, we'll only focus on people have got names. So what you can see straight away, if I zoom zoom out here, is you can very easily start to see how we can do these, uh, do, do our you know equivalent uh, sort of chess player numbers here. So for example here, let's just quickly zoom in. Oh, there's something a bit odd here. 
But you can see that these two players have played each other. And what we can do now is we can do a graph between this anonymous player and this anonymous player. So I'm just going to see if we can patch the data up here because obviously... Oh, oh, here's a good one. There we go. So the only reason why we've got some blank nodes is because we've only got the top 150 results here and um, sort of Gibraltar is a massive tournament where you'll have hundreds upon hundreds of players. So that's why we've got some empty nodes because we don't have their names, but that's okay. I'll, 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 I'm gonna write this up so I'll talk through um, the various elements. But here's a great example of what we've got going on here. Look at this, this is beautiful. So in this example here, we've got um, Jules Massard here. So he's got a rank of 82. And you've got on the other side here, you've got um, Tizia Gara, rank 107. And what's really interesting here is that they've not played each other, but you can see the path. So here's the, you know, so there's a number of one, two, three, four, five, six. So they're six hops apart. They've played in the same tournament and we can see that they're six hops apart and um, connected. So that's really, really fun. So you can see, you know, that Assad won against um, Ivan Cheparinov, who uh, was beaten by Peter Lombards, who was beaten by Nana Zan, I think that's going to be Jan Gniga, I think she's a Georgian player, who beat um, Sabrina Vega Guri, I'm going to be terrible at names, I apologise in advance, and so forth. So you kind of get the idea of what's going on. So that's really, really cool. So this is like the handshake graph now. So we can do we can do this handshake graph where we can see you know how they're connected so they're not played in the same tournament they're playing the same tournament but they're not played against each other and you can see the path of the players who've played against each other to see what that connection is so that's really really cool and what we can do is we can do like a winning like uh what's the longest winning path that we can see so if we do well, let's let's do winning path so let's do match p1 player and I can use this now because uh, we're specifying a direction and it should be limited. Let's see what the longest path we have of this. So let's do uh, path equals that. So let's do, uh, is this gonna be the right way around? Actually, it's return path. Let's, let's, let's live life dangerously. This should be, this should be damage limitation. Oh, look at that one. So here, so it's bringing back the same one that we had before. But you can see here, um, you can see with Nana, uh, Nana, you can go, so you can, she, you can see that she won against this person, who won against this person, who won against this person. So you've got a nice path there. And then you, you can see you can see how this path um, continues. So it also runs here because she won against these two. But you can start to see that interesting uh, long path. So. That's a nice bit of fun going on there. And then the rest of these, you can see they tend to be reasonably short little uh, little hops. But there you go. So hopefully that was interesting. I thought that was fun. I, I'm really keen to go away, uh, clean up, and just think about how I can do a massive data import. But you're starting to see um, how you can start doing these um, yeah, fishing numbers. So let's, let's do one with uh, Nana, because that was quite a good, that was a nice long chain, wasn't it? So if we want to do something like uh, just let's do simple shortest path to begin with. So let's do um, match p1 player uh, name colon. I'm just gonna and let's say I want to do. Garcia, let's do that one. I know we could do it like this, can we? Yeah, let's just do this. Let's do match path equals shortest path. Uh, P1 
player name Garatizia Turn pass, so we're probably going to get that same path we saw previously Ooh, what have I done wrong? Oh, I forgot to close the bracket, that's what went wrong Oh Have I misspelled a name? More than likely. <sighs> All right. No, that was right. What have I? What have we gone? What's gone on here? Have I? Have we got some draws that I've missed? Oh, I wonder if there's some sneaky spaces that have come in. I bet you that's what's happened. So I think we've probably got some sneaky spaces, but you kind of get the idea of what's going on here. So let me just have a quick... Oh yes, there's a, there's a, a, a sneaky space has appeared here and I am wondering if there's a sneaky space here as well. There we go, right. So there you go, so you can see that it's again, so this is how we can do like, you know, what's the, uh, uh, what, what's the, uh, you know, what, what's the, uh, the Titsia number for, uh, for uh, Nana, and you can see we've done that, so we've got the shortest path, and you can see that, you know, Nana played against uh, Sabrina, played against Rodrigo, who then played against Titsia, so you can see that link, so you can see that there's a hop of, th of uh, three, so it's like, it would be a nana number of three, and uh, nana is a very famous, uh, very famous Georgian uh, chess player. So there you go. So that's a bit of fun. Uh, so that's some musings. I'm going to write this up because I think this is fun, and it's nice to have a look at different domains where you can apply this kind of thing. So I will, yeah. I, so hopefully you can have a go. You'll be keen to have a go as well. And I'm going to try and pull in some more chess results. So it's not just one tournament. We can like do big data sets. So it should be a bit of fun. But yeah, hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for joining me and I will see you again next week. Have a wonderful day.